If you ever wanted to run an off meta offense and still have a lot of success, this is the perfect video for you. I wanted to put this out a while ago, but I got busy. I had a lot of stuff on my mind, university. I was ball boy at a tennis tournament, which was a lot of fun. Just in general, a lot of stuff was happening. And so I just got complacent and didn't do anything for the YouTube. Also, we hit a thousand subscribers. I appreciate you guys so very much for this. And I got a comment last night saying like, hey, can you finally do the U-Trips ebook? And I'm doing it. I'm sorry you guys had to wait this long, but this is going to be awesome. Hopefully I can make up for the delay. Without any further ado, let's now get into it. The first thing that we need to talk about are abilities. Abilities are a big part of the game, as we all know. And I want to show you my specific ability setup that I have going right now. It sounds crazy because I've got a lot of abilities, but it's going to work out. I promise you that. So we got three short in elites. Now we don't have four, we have three. So now it's important to know where we want to put these. Our tight end number, excuse me, that was the wrong direction. Number 86 and number 13. Those guys have short in elite because they are inside the numbers a lot of the time. I got fearless on my quarterback, Kozar. He's an amazing quarterback. Release not that great, but fearless in the pocket just means that whenever you get rushed, the under pressure does not work. So you're going to miss a lot less throws that way. And that is just crucial because well, people are just coming in and you get a lot of pressure. So having that ability is very important. We also then need three route apprentices. So number 11, he needs to have outside apprentice. Then my tight end, I want to have tight end apprentice on him. And number 13, Alan Lazard, he should have in the slot right there, slot apprentice. It works out perfectly. That is my favorite combination for this offense. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our audibles. So curve flats right there is fine. Halfback power, don't like that. We're going to put 5-6 trap in there. Then right here at the uh, third spot from all the way down, that's going to be tight end whip. On PA cross, I'm kind of kind of torn on this. There are a couple of things you can do. I personally would recommend you put in scat right there. Where, oh my God, where is scat at? There you go. There is scat. The reason my scat is good is because it has a nice corner, but we'll get to that. So first things first, we need to talk about how to aggressive get, but we need to use them if, if we want to run an effective office. If you're bagged sometimes, it makes sense to go for an egg because it's an easy way to get a lot of yards. So you need to wait for the opponent's cornerback in one-on-one -on -one coverage to turn around. That is probably the most important thing. Get the timing right. Then we need to pass leader properly. Obviously, we're going to throw a high pass. So that is L1 while we're throwing in. Throw a bullet pass. So L1 and then hold it down. And we also need to make sure that if we're throwing it to the left side of the field, we're pass leading it to 10 o'clock. So if you imagine uh, the left thumbstick to be kind of a clock, that would be 10 o'clock and that is 2 o'clock. Oh, I actually accidentally motioned. That's fun. Uh, that's funny. If we want to throw it to the right side of the field, then we're going to throw it to 2 o'clock. So we're going to put a streak on circle and on square. We're going to run the play and there you go. Lazard dropped in. If you have Harold Carmichael there or Randy Moss, that's not gonna work, uh, that's not gonna happen. I just want to show it to you with some uh, pretty bad receivers just to really hammer home the point that this is this is gonna work. I don't know. We're not getting the right animations. One more time. Maybe I'm passing a little bit too much up the field. A little bit more. There you go. That's what should happen. And imagine if you have someone taller there. I mean, Lazard is not the smallest person ever. But if you have someone taller there, then that's just going to be so much more success. It's right there. We just box him out and we get it. I'm trying to throw it to the right side of the field one time as well. So snap the ball. Two o'clock. Try to go for the egg. I don't know what's happening. That's That was a really weird interaction because he kind of undercut it. I don't know if they play better on the right side of the field. That just might be it. There you go. Interesting. Sammy Watkins, I've noticed, is one of the worst players to do this with. Obviously, tall receivers. The taller, the better. The better jumping, the more success you're going to have. Yeah, he's playing this really weird. It's just, he's playing like a uh, back shoulder sort of ish. And that is kind of the ball that we're throwing, I guess. So sometimes they're just playing it amazingly. That's right there. Interesting. Uh, if you guys have been playing any head to head at all, you know this. Uh, it's very, very effective. So the proper way to do this, obviously, is throw it to 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock, depending on which side of the field you're throwing it to. But I'm not going to spend too much more time on it because you guys get this. Obviously, the people that have been playing a lot of Madden uh, have sort of been forced to learn how to ag properly. And if you already know this, then this is just repetitive. Also, I'm going to put uh, on the timeline all the stuff. I'm going to break it down into chapters so you can skip around. Let's now go to the next part. Now it's time to talk about beating man coverage. And this is where one specific play comes in. 
which is right here, corners. Now this does not look that interesting, but corners is an amazing play against man coverage. So gonna call cover, for, uh, cover on hold. And what you will notice is that number 88, Thomas right here, I need him to have slot apprentice. That's why I have him in there. He is inside the numbers and that is where short in the lead is going to activate. So if I audible to maybe curl flats, you see that he motions outside. Now it's not gonna activate. So coming out in corners, that is crucial. I'm going to block my running back and that's it. I'm just gonna snap the ball and you will see how 88, he, uh, Thomas doesn't have short in the lead. That's why he didn't activate. But if you have short in the lead right there, then that is just gonna make it that much better. Uh, this is probably the best throw against man coverage out of this formation, especially Michael Crabtree. He just, he just always gets open. I've never seen Michael Crabtree not get open. Or never, I guess never seen ever, but it, I guess sometimes he gets back. That's just how man coverage is sometimes, but this is one of the best routes against man coverage. Say that is covered, we can then look to hit uh, the Andre Hopkins over there on the right, or we can look to hit our tight end. Tight end also does a good job against man coverage on this route. You see how you get separation. Of course, the corner and the post are kind of close together, so not ideal. But it's it's a great play against man coverage, and I just wanted to really point out the... Oops, <laughs> bad timing. Uh, you need to make sure that you throw it with good timing, so I guess go into practice mode for that. I just wanted to point out the difference between uh, where he lines up in this play and in some few other plays, but this play especially compared to some other things that you can do next play is going to be tight and whip and this is one of our base plays i'm just gonna uh, t tell you put jefferson a streak and then block the running back slant hopkins and then motion snap hopkins in the reason why you want to motion snap him is so that he does not get pressed obviously if he gets pressed i can sometimes mess with the timing a little bit and that is not what we want we want him to get free release so that we can make our reads that's the wrong play tight and whip Look at this, our tight end is going to beat man coverage. So I'm just gonna throw it to him right there. You see that he gets nice separation. The slant beats man coverage and the post beats man coverage. So you just pick and choose. This is also a great play against zone, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to throw the post one more time. Or well, I guess I, I haven't thrown the slant yet. So if you guys don't believe in that emotion snap, slant beats man coverage. The thing that I really want to hammer home though is that man coverage is fluky as hell. Sometimes it's going to bag it. That's one of the, one of the uh, weirdest uh, things that will happen to you is if this play gets bagged. But it is going to happen. You're just like, why? Every single route on this is supposed to beat man. Okay, I just had it right there. Every single route on this play is supposed to beat man coverage. Why are they getting bagged? That's just sometimes going to happen. But just stay patient. Go back to this play. It's gonna be a lot of, it's gonna bring a lot of success to you. And of course, if you ever get uh, the feeling, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's open. I'm just gonna throw an egg. Right there you see Justin Jefferson, we got a better receiver out there than Sammy Watkins, of, uh, for God's sakes. You see that this is a very good thing. Snap this ball. Once again, I'm gonna throw an egg over here. Uh, it's it's all honestly just a fan. Justin Jefferson not even as tall as Harold Carmichael, and Carmichael is kind of the guy for for those jump balls. So you see how good the eggs are. Now one more play that I want to talk about. I didn't even need to go uh, go to the play call menu. Is curl flats. Curl flats has an amazing post route, and I want to kind of show you why this post is so good. You see that the cut is kind of jaggedy. That means it's a good post route. That's just something that we have figured out. I'm going to put Justin Jefferson on a C route, just like so. I'm gonna put my tight end on an out route. Thomas on the slant and block the running back just so I have some extra protection. I'm going to motion snap Jefferson and make sure that I snap him uh, before he goes over to the other side. It's right there, you see, my God. Uh, the thing that lit up, lit up right there is short in lead. In ultimate team, I don't have short in lead on him because I need the AP for fearless. But even without short in lead, believe me, this, this C route is just gonna do a great job for you. So once again, and then R1 also gets open. If you guys don't know how to freeform pass yet, put your settings on near, on placement and accuracy, near, 20 out of 20, and then you can just hold uh, down L. My bad, I didn't put it on a C route, but I guess I can just do it right now. Um, you can also run it like this if you want to. I don't know. C routes to the left, as we know, are better. Uh, but yeah, 20 out of 20, and then just hold down L2 while you're passing, and it's you'll never miss a throw, and you'll get perfect pass accuracy. That's, so that's uh, I can highly recommend that. 
One more play that I want to point out is this scat. And the reason this scat is so good is, first of all, because we can throw it to triangle out in the flat and we have someone faster there, uh, like Cordell Patterson or Eric Dickerson, or for God's sakes, anyone, uh, any fast uh, running back. You're going to get a good angle on that linebacker. Second thing is this corner out. Our one is going to have short and leads. He lines up inside the numbers. The cut is going to be inside the numbers. That means we get the perfect cut, get separation on that just about every time. So, once again, oh, that was the wrong play. But see, post route still beat man. There you go. So even if you call the wrong play, you'll have a lot of success against man coverage in this formation. Scant. Uh, my recommendation for this would be maybe put George Kittle on a streak, put Thomas on a streak, Jefferson slant, and then snap him right here, or you can wait to snap him right here, and then you can look to hit. Uh, throw an egg catch just like so <laughs> once again uh same thing just about you also have the running back and the corner out. amazing play against man coverage but that is how i'd like to attack it let's talk about zone now there are two plays that i like to run against zone and of course there are a lot more in this formation but if i go through every single play in this formation we're gonna be be here forever tight and whip and i'm gonna call cover three to start out with and i've already shown you the setup there you go you can block the running back you can keep him on his route just like so and yeah let's go r1 i can throw right here or if i want to wait i can throw the post now this is amazing at picking on the user because he has to choose either the slant or the zig and you're gonna throw whichever one he doesn't choose uh i didn't motion snap right there right there is a little bit of a window i wouldn't throw that if i were you because the user can just sometimes get funky but the user believe me he's going to choose one or the other and it's going to be pretty obvious it's just a great spacing between those two routes. And then once again, if we wait all the way over there, that's just a large gain. Let's move on to the play curl flats. And there are a couple of setups for this. The first one is just going to be the streak. Thomas, motion Jefferson over, put him on a slant and put Kittle on an out route, or you can keep him on his flat, whichever one you prefer. We can throw that post route as right there, our pass let that down with the free form passing. We can do that. We can, if we want, keep. Uh, that was my bad. I didn't. I'm just gonna come out and curl flats because I don't want this to happen. That was the wrong play. Curl flats. Then fix sky. You can keep our George Kittle on this flat, and we can high pass and free form it to the outside just like so. That, that allows us to get a good catch, which will give us a good rack, and then we can get like three yards. If we ever need three yards, and we are suspecting that our opponent is running his own and not hard flats, then we can run this. Of course, we can also check it down to Jones, get a few yards that way. That's seven yards right there, pretty simple, pretty easy. But it all just stems uh, from this motion and making sure we can make the read between the slant and the post. In this case, gonna throw the slant. Very easy. Pass lead that away, pass lead that down all the time. Never pass lead that slant up because you're gonna throw it into a zone, which is not ideal. But if you pass that, lead that down, you're gonna be pretty safe. And I just wanna show you that if we wait long enough, Hopkins on that post is absolutely money. Now, if we want to talk about beating cover two, for instance, we're going to put Justin Jefferson on the streak, put Thomas on the corner rod, block the running back. Doesn't show that I blocked the running back, back, but there you see. And then I'm going to just, oops, uh, the zone actually played uh, pretty far back, but that is a play that you can run against cover two. It's a sort of cover two beater. Cover two once again. This time it's going to look a lot better. We get bumped on the outside. If your opponent's at zone drops, then you're not. Uh, oops, he got. He actually got his head in there. If your opponent's at zone drops, then he's not. Uh, then our guy on the outside is not going to get bumped. I'm just, just, just going to uh, play the sticks to really hammer home the point that if he does not get bumped, we have a good shot at a one play touchdown, honestly. So I'm going to snap this ball. You see, oops, we got bumped a little bit, but free from that all the way to the outside and we're gone. We're absolutely gone. Now there is a fade in this uh, formation. I think it's tight and deep in. That's what the play is called. I'm gonna check. And this is a tight and deep out. And let's call cover two. Boom, tight and deep out. Uh, same thing applies. If we do not get bumped on this one, 
abs absolutely crazy play. You can run the setup like this. And this is, I guess, where we're kind of going into one play touchdown territory. I don't really like to run one play touchdowns this year just because the pass rush is so insane. Uh, I'm just gonna fall down. Now, this is the part of the video where I would usually talk about one play touchdowns. But this year, I do not go for one play touchdowns. Honestly, not ever. There is some in Gun Bunch, which I sometimes go to if I run Bunch. Uh, I switch schemes a lot. But in this one, I don't see the point because it takes a long time to develop and you're gonna get shedded. For example, let's just talk about a one play touchdown against cover three sky. So right there, actually, if I just put him on a deep out, just like so, you see, I snap the ball and no, no shot. That's, that's just no shot that I'll get the time uh, to get a decent throw off. So that's why I really don't, uh, I, I don't recommend going for one play touchdowns at all. I want to talk about some very specific though because cover four quarters gives a lot of people in Y of Chips a headache. And it used to do that to me as well. But I'm gonna call the play Y out, and this is where Titan Apprent and yeah, Titan Apprentice really comes in handy. You're just going to put Kittle on the crossing route. And so now if I snap this ball, you see that the Titan gets left wide open. Now, of course, I got shedded right there for, for no apparent reason. Um but yeah, let's try this again. <laughs> Uh, you see how he lets off right there, and that's the that's the annoying part of this game. It's just you're you're gonna get shedded, and that is absolutely that is why it's there's no point in going for one play touchdowns. Now, what you will notice is that uh, circle bombs, circle just beats. That is a consistent thing. I'll run this play a lot of times. Let's just say it two or three more times. Uh, put X on the crosser, and you just see that we are always going to beat that. We we're always gonna beat that. That's one of the most most consistent things uh, that I've seen. So I'm gonna block my running back this time just to make sure we do not do anything stupid. We still got pressure, but circle still won. Just look at circle. That's the only thing I want you guys to look at. My gosh, we're just always getting the speed rush, aren't we? <laughs> there you go, Jefferson once again. So it is a consistent thing against cover four match. Absolutely, absolutely recommend you guys do this. Maybe I should also uh, make sure that this works against uh, cover for palms. Why I actually haven't tested this against palms, so it's possible that I just fall flat on my ass right here. Uh, yeah, palms does a better job playing that. Uh, the reason for that, uh, the reason why in quarters it's not working is because the uh, the swap offs and the matching appears occurs a little bit later. It seems so that's why they are kind of a little bit too late to react to that post. But it seems like cover four palms is a decent job of it. Okay, so not the best against cover four palms, but most people run match. Uh, not match, but quarters. Yeah, I keep messing this up. So let's now get into the last part of the video, which is going to be audibling to trips tight end. So what I recommend you guys to do is set audibles for trips tight end. Or not really set audibles, actually those are the perfect ones. PS lock corner is important, slants is important, quick base is important. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna, if, you're, if you're in the middle of the field or if you really want an audible, you want to come out with the trips and why off trips to the short side. So why I'm gonna come out with the short side. Short side means that the, we're on the left hash, then the left side is the short side and right is the far side with the wide side of the field. So now if I audible, let's just say the verticals, you see how now we have the space for the trips with the verticals. So I'm going to snap the ball and you see cover three, seam shot seam shot and this is something that you do quick hiking now of course it takes a while to audible uh, to motion those guys, that guys over they just take forever but once they're there come on be be faster be quicker be quicker and now snap 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 throw that seam ball or i don't know try to outrun them <laughs> try to outrun them throw an egg try to outrun them, whatever but quick hike it now second play in this is going to be PS lock corner, audible to PS lock corner, put square on a streak, you can keep the play action. I would recommend you guys keep the play action, put triangle on a slant just like so, in same motion as before. <laughs> We've got a deep corner. Uh, so those are two of the most annoying motions in the game. Of course, we can also hand the ball off if, if we want to, but this is more so focused on passing. This time I'm gonna audible to, uh, to verticals once again. And we'll just have stuff open. I'll audible to uh, cover two on the defense side of the ball. Snap the ball. 
against cover two we'll have oops we'll have square we'll have triangle down the middle of the field just a lot of stuff this this audible is one of the more annoying ones trust me so do that but yeah we're at the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed this also i got a green screen right my camera is cut off but you got a green screen behind me, uh, behind me it looks awesome but yeah i appreciate you guys so much i'm gonna try to stream more like youtube i want to stream a little bit on there want to play some money games i want to kind of get back into madden because i've been kind of lazy but now it's time to get grinding get going hope you guys enjoyed this hope you guys learned something i'm going to be doing uh, personalized coaching sessions so hit me up on my twitter if you want that it's going to be 25 bucks for an hour i'm gonna talk about whatever with you so we're gonna go into practice mode and we're gonna have uh we're gonna talk about some strategies that we can employ to make you a better madden player so my twitter dms they i don't, I don't think they're open actually i'll open them up so you can just flood me over there also check out my instagram I hope you guys enjoyed this man it's i'm sorry for putting it off this long hope you guys learned something and until next time peace out if you like what you see please subscribe to the channel also i'm going to be doing some personalized coaching sessions with you to really in a one-on-one -on -one style make sure if you're enjoying this video please subscribe to the channel we just surpassed 1000 now it's time to keep growing this channel make sure to also write down a comment just put an emoji in there or whatever it helps the video grow I will also be doing some personalized coaching sessions like one-on-one -on -one, where I'll teach you everything I know about the game. It's going to be 25 bucks per hour. Just hit me up on my Twitter if you want to go more top 100 in the weekend league or if you want to try to make a run in some of these MCS tournaments. I can give you some help with that. Twitter DMs are open. Also, you can hit me up on Instagram if you don't use Twitter. Links are in the description. But yeah, let's... I can't waste any more time. Let's keep going.